it's episode four of another installment of Eco, but there's been a lot of changes. There's been server updates, a change in my own location. So let's go over that and see where we are. So they did an update to the game itself. Predominantly, there was some bug fixes, but also an upgrade to the government system. And a couple of things notable for me were that I really like that sped up the kind of election process and the voting process sort of thing is that now if you have by default, 51% of the total population that's able to vote, if it's clearly a win because there's no possible way that it could vote the other way, then the law automatically passes. Another thing that I really like in the game, because sometimes you did have to wait a very long time. You had to wait a whole day or whatever for a law to pass. And maybe that's not a long time, but still, this did speed things up a little bit. This is configurable though in the election process. So you can change that a little bit if you want to. Along with this update, the server that I play on, which is the dad speed server, it's a very slow progression, long running server. There was a decision made to go ahead and upgrade our server to the latest version. This also meant a reset of the world itself. So we had to start from scratch, but Eco is really cool because the beginnings of grinding out and trying to just start a new life in a new world is really a good one in Eco. It's a good experience. And a lot of times I almost like the first half of the game playthrough almost more than I like the second half, but both have a lot of great qualities to them. This gave me an opportunity to find a different kind of location and propose a different kind of playthrough. So what I've done is I found a new place to build. It's different than I had before. Although I'm gonna follow the same progression I'd intended with the other part of the playthrough. I'm gonna start with masonry and then go into pottery, but I'm not gonna build on the beach. I decided to build more in the center of the continent. I decided to build on the edge of the jungle where I can still get the clay and the shale, but also on the edge of the grasslands where I can have easy access to the limestone, to the sandstone, to hopefully coal if I can find some, and lots of veggies. Now, as I explained before, I settled on the beach because it gave me a easy access to sand because I need that to make mortar for just my initial masonry. However, there are other ways to be able to get going. So here on the edge of the grassland, I'm actually able to collect wood pulp and plant fibers and be able to cook that easily on my campfire to be able to make mortar. Now it's not the most efficient and I should point out a couple things about this. It is a very labor intensive, so you're gonna burn lots of calories and be eating more food than you probably would if you were digging the sand because you don't get a lot of mortar from that wood pulp and that wood fiber. But it is a way to be able to start to get going fairly easily. And on the edge of the grassland, there is a lot of this available. Not only is it more difficult to be able to make the mortar per calorie spent, but it also does not give you any skill points towards your masonry when you're cooking your stuff on the fire like this. So you're making mortar without actually contributing to your skill leveling, which is a problem and something that you want to try to change over as soon as you can. But it's okay to get going just to get some mortar started. Now you can maximize your calories spent and the amount of swings that you have to do by not just harvesting any old grass. It turns out the blue stem provides one of the highest returns per swing. It's often the case where it will give you at least five of these plant fibers as opposed to three that you'll get a lot of times from other grasses. At a minimum, you'll be getting four from the blue stem, which is still more than you're gonna get from the other types of grasses. So when possible, be a little selective and cut this blue stem, which is also something that's very, very prevalent here along the grasslands, which is another reason why I decided I could settle here and still get by just fine. Another thing I decided to do a little bit differently with this restart is to build a different kind of house. Before, I chopped a lot of trees and built a house out of wood and my initial workshop out of wood, but I decided to do it differently. I decided I would be a bit of a hobbit and I would just dig into the side of this hill where there was some stone 
and I would try to level up my masonry skill right away by making my stone house just buried right into the side of this cliff. And it's worked out pretty well. In the process, I've also dug up lots of clay that I've just stored over to the side to be able to use later. I'm gonna use that for my pottery and I really don't have a use for it right now, but it's fine that I'm digging it out in the process. Now I don't wanna keep making that mortar from the plant fiber for very long. It's fine to start with and get this house going just so I can get my mortar table. But the two things that I'm going to need to be able to start getting sand is I'm gonna need a store so I can buy the sand and maybe even more importantly, I need a road to be able to get to other people so we can have commerce between us. Miners make the sand, so I need access so a miner can come and sell me sand and in return get some of the mortared stone or other products I'll be making. So after getting my store up and running, next was to find a route of a road that would take me to most people. And so I plotted one out here and the chopping of trees and the laying of ramps started to begin. I also traded some of my mortared stone at a fellow that was selling road tools, and that way I could stamp out a road. I realized that someone coming here might not even realize there was a path to my property. And it helps do two things. Not only when you're pulling your cart, does it give you a little bit of a track to be able to follow and help you move a little faster, but when you look at the map as a whole, it puts a bit of a brown line across the map so people can go, oh, look, there's a way to get out to Earth's property. I can follow this path and I know that I can get there. I had made lots of ramps while I was digging out my house. So as long as I had these ramps, I also decided to make a path over to an area where I could have access to limestone and sandstone. The limestone is a little more valuable. People really like that white rock that you can make products out of, make their buildings out of this limestone, mortared stone. But you can also make statues and different things, benches, chairs, and so on. And the white limestone just has a really nice look to it. People like that. I could also get access to some sandstone. So I created a bit of a path all the way through here a little bit. It's not very far from my house. And I go through this beautiful, lush, and very rich vegetation to be able to get to a mining area to be able to mine the limestone and the sandstone. So it's very close, so it gives me access to different types of rocks, which you kind of want. You want a little bit of variety. I talked about leveling up my masonry skill and how important that was. But if you're somebody that's played prior to 9.0, you'll remember that leveling a given skill did two things. It sped up the process so it took less time, and it also made you use less materials every time that you leveled up with that skill. That's different in 9.0. In 9.0, leveling up does not make you use less materials to be able to make your product. The only thing it does is it makes you burn less calories to be able to make it. So you're asking, well, how do I get it to use less product? That's now through these extra modules that you can buy, and they come in different grades. You buy these modules from other players, plug them into your table, which now makes it more efficient and uses less materials. What they've also done in Eco to help with that cooperative idea is that a lot of times the beginning module that you need to plug in, you can't make yourself. For instance, the module that I need for my masonry table is actually made by a carpenter. Now, once he makes me that level one module, I do have the ability to upgrade it to a level two. But if I then want to upgrade it to a level three, I'm gonna to have to sell that module or make a deal with another player with a different skill to level it up. So you're constantly having to work with other people to be able to do the things that you wanna do. But the modules are really important. And I decided that early on, I also wanted a module. I wanted to try to get things as efficient as possible. So there you have it. I have a workshop, I have a store, a couple of different mines going, and a road that leads me to all the other people. So I've got a really nice start on this new refreshed restarted server. And it'll only improve from here. I'm really liking my start in the game a little bit better than I did before. I was really, really far from everyone else. And now I just feel a little more connected. And I have a feeling things are gonna really pick up from here. Even though in this restart of the server, they even further dialed back the progression. 
So you're gonna gain skill points even slower. It's gonna take people a few days to even get that second star to be able to get their second skill. So this is the slowest progression server I've experienced. And I'm really curious to see how this plays out, but so far it's been really nice. It's created lots of interaction amongst the players, lots of economy, and it really feels like everyone's on an even keel here. So I'm really enjoying this. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this playthrough, and I'll be talking to you later.